Hey everybody and welcome back. Right, well, we're going to press on today with the, um, the frame. We're going to do this front tube, uh, make the engine plates and do the gusset plate at the top. So the front part of the frame will basically be finished. We've got a couple of brackets to put on it, of course, because we've got things like the ignition coil to mount and uh, I'm going to use Electrics World so for the twins just as there was with the Yam 650 there'll be a little CDI box as well uh, plus we have something to make up for the head steady now on the head steady I'll show you there are if you can see them up there two of the bolts have extensions so the bolt has actually got a, uh, a hex as if it's a nut screwed on but it's actually part of the bolt there's only two of them so what I did for the 350 was I bought two extra ones and replaced the ordinary hole down studs with two of those so I had four of these uh, hole down studs for the head that had the extension on and then I made a nice head steady that bolted onto that and onto the frame I'm going to do that for these which again is slightly different from the Otter um, but the process is the same I just think it's going to give me a are much better and more rigid mounting up there and seeing as we don't have bottom frame low bottom bottom frame rails I think that'll be better okay now speaking of putting this tube in I had a comment which I can't find again but I wanted to answer it because it was somebody who it's been asked a lot before but obviously I, we have a lot of new viewers in fact we're over eight and a half thousand now so let me say Thank you very much for everybody that's subscribing and I know I have people who watch who don't necessarily subscribe so welcome to everybody uh, I just take a moment to say that the policy is I just film what I'm working on and you're there to watch so people in the past have maybe mentioned that sometimes I get in the way and sometimes the lighting's not perfect and blah blah sorry don't care I'm not a filmmaker, I'm a motorcycle nut. So anyway, welcome everybody. Hope you'll enjoy being with us in the workshop. So to go back, the question was, why do I bronze the frames? And this goes back a long way to my youth when I was first learning stuff. You know, like a lot of people of my age, I learned a lot of my motorcycle stuff from Phil Irving's books, Tuning for Speed. In fact, that's got to be the point where when I have nothing to do, Linda still says to me, why don't you read Tuning for Speed and Motorcycle Engineering, which are both very good books. I don't know, they're presumably out of print, but I'm sure if you're really interested, you can find one, probably for a lot of money now, particularly the hardback copy. Okay, so, you still find, like with the Otters and like with a lot of frames, bicycle frames as well, that they're all bronzed, and they're bronzed for a very simple reason. The type of tubing that we use, this chromolybdenum, although it's um, it's in various ratios of the chrome and the molybdenum and steel, etc. So there are different grades of the tube. What I remember is when everybody built the Reynolds 531, that was bicycles and motorcycles, so all the trials frames, spond and road race frames, all sorts of people. Reynolds recommended that you bronze them because as they put it, it was kinder to the tubing. Um, you're not making a melted joint, you're not putting a lot of heat in, there's all sorts of reasons, but basically I've always gone on that phrase. Reynolds says it's kinder to the tubing and Reynolds should know. So that's why I do it. All right? Okay, so uh, can't think of anything else. Uh, let's get on and I'm hoping to have the frame finished within two weeks I think I've got about two weeks work now that might be three weeks videos because sometimes an hour's of work might only be five minutes video because the rest of it's all just you know filing something or what have you but I think with this a lot of the work is going to be videoed so uh, as long as I don't ramble on too much it'll probably be only three weeks so let's start marking up to cut this tube to fit onto the headstock. 
Right, well, I haven't cut this bottom piece to length because it's handy to just have it resting on something there. So what I'm going to do is set this to the way I want it. We'll mark it and then when we cut it, let's say I mark it to be there, we'll cut it here and then gradually we'll work our cork backwards and that way I can just keep dropping it in, dropping it in until I get back to this the bottom piece here, the vertical piece, being where I want it. So let me get this. It's about how far away from the engine I want. It's going to be slightly difficult. To hold this. It's just it's magnetic, but it's just too heavy for the magnet. Okay, that's it. That's clearly exhaust. That's nice. Can't get the top off the pen. There we go. So we want it to be there to there. Okay, so that's going to be it. So as I say, what we'll do is we'll cut it long and then we can just finagle this so it drops on there nicely. So let me go and cut that and then we'll start doing our filing. Now I just watched that video and you might be worried that the tube was wobbling in my hand. So what I'm going to do is set this again. The first line is there, the second line is the one I'm going to cut. So are you watching? Oops, I went the wrong way. There. Alright, happy? Let's go and saw. So there you go. It's not quite as perfect as that one, but it's a really close fit. And what I've done is I've bronzed in these cross pieces. As I said, they were offset, they were a quarter of an inch from that side, they're half an inch from this side with one and a half inch tube. I've just put a clamp on. I've checked this, this is vertical this way and it's vertical vertically. So we're all ready. What I'm gonna do, I've only put a couple of blobs of bronze on there. I'll put a couple more pieces of bronze on just for now and I'll bead blast this, same as the rest of it. And then I'll bring the welder over here clamp it all up and we'll bronze that in then the next thing after that is to make up our gusset plates for there this one I'll make up probably take right across to there I'll have to do a little bit of bumping and what have you to get it to fit in there but don't forget this is inch and a half that's and that we're inch and three quarter so we're an eighth of an inch down so we'll get it to match that, we'll get it to match that, as I say, maybe all the way down to here. Just put a nice little curve into it. When it's all bronzed, I could heat that piece up and with a ball peen hammer just knock it in. It wouldn't be much, but it would knock it in and then I can do the last little bit of bronze in that. Alright, so let me take this back off and get it bead blasted and ready and then we'll bring the welder over here and do that. And there's the tube bronzed in. So as I say, we've got to do gusset plates and we've got to make up our uh, engine plates for the front. But we'll do that tomorrow morning. In fact, I think I might do the engine plates first because I'll do these when the frame's off and lay it flat. When I take it back off, it's a lot easier. All right, see you in the morning. Now, Got that all tightened up and I've been checking everything. The wheels are still vertical. These plates are vertical. The cases are vertical. Hang on a second. I'll put a gripping long straight edge along the cases, checked it against the back wheel, the rim front and back. The engine's still perfectly in line. On the center line, everything is right. So now we'll look at the back 
engine plates. Now a couple of people asked me about these engine plates. They said, oh, you put them on upside down. Well, yes I did. Because if I put them on the other way, going downwards, I might have been in, uh, in the way of putting the box on for the swinging arm. So we're putting them on above instead of below. So usual thing, and the usual thing is I've lost what I was going to show you. Hold on a second. Right, I found it. So, usual thing, I made a cardboard template. Right? From the cardboard template, I've made a quarter inch aluminium one. I've got it drilled for here. And what I'm going to do to get this one right is, you see I'll put some uh, red die chem on. So we will put those in there. And then we'll go around the other side with, there it is, a transfer punch. Now I could tighten those up, put this in and hammer it, but with putting the die chem on, all I've, oh, I've got to walk the other way around because I've got the, the welder at that end. All I've got to do is hold this in place, put that through there. Do that, and then what we should find is a nice little mark, right? So let me go and centre punch that, and drill a hole in it, and then I'll come back. Right, I've drilled the hole, so keep fingers crossed. And now push this 3 8 inch bolt in here, it should come out the other end. There we go. Right, now the next thing is when they went up the other way because of the difference in shape of the casings, you remember the two mounting plates were actually different shapes. Going up this way, I might get away with exactly the same one. So uh, I'll try it, but you're not going to be able to see. So once more, you'll just have to take my word for it. So let's have a look. I'll put that in there. No, it won't. It's different. So let me make another cardboard template. Or modify the one I've got. And then I'll make up another alloy plate. So, we've got our front plates on. I have to get some bolts the right length. They're a bit long. Back plates on. I just put the exhaust pipe on. I wanted to check that... Uh, the plates didn't stick out too far in there. Now, I think what I'm going to do in this frame part two <clears throat> is try and finish off this front loop. So I'll make up the template and cut some uh, plate for there for the gusset, both sides, and I'll just tack it in a number of places and that'll keep that all right. But I'm thinking and thinking about this head mounted. Now, these extended bolts, I've got them there, they're normally just in the back here. As I say, I will get two extra ones, I think, instead of the ordinary studs, so that I have four of these coming up. But these are only an inch and three quarters apart, so... And also, I don't like with any kind of stay or mounting or anything for it to be too long. It can flex too much, even though this is going to be really rigid front and back and have a mounting underneath. I don't want it to be, so I'm thinking I might just go to mount it at the back here. I might make up a plate thing for all four, but just put a mounting in at the back. On Ian's bike, as I mentioned, there's sort of a piece here and he used some, I guess, quarter inch plate that came along and it bent up and went and bolted to that. So I've got to give that a little bit more thought. So while I'm thinking about it, I'll cut these out and just tack them in. So let's make some cardboard templates. So I think we'll make it about like that. Now, as I say, we can pop that in a little bit. 
when we do it because here and here that's fine but as I say this is in an eighth from that face so when that's all done we'll just bash that in there and that'll be nice and then I can get it all this to bronze it in and I think that's plenty of plate both sides and it is actually 41 30 or whatever plate I got it's not just mild steel and it's uh, what size did I get 330 seconds I think 90 thou whatever yeah 90 100 thou I think it was which is the size of plate that they use on the B25 and B50 frames for uh, this gusseting. All right, so let me cut out some steel because it's the uh, the alloy steel. It's hard to cut, so I'm going to use the uh, plasma cutter to cut two pieces out. So let me go and do that. Right. Well, here's our uh, two pieces of plate. So what I'm going to do with them, as I say, we've got uh, an eighth of an inch difference in diameter, well, on each side for this. So we're going to put that on there. As you can see, it's thick. And then I'm going to put it in the bender and I'm going to bend it from there to there. So we'll just bend that in and that should get us that nicely so let me draw a line and just go and bend that and we'll make sure it does work because it's not it should really have sort of a double bend if you like so that it goes in and then it's flat which would require one bend inwards one bend outwards but we're going to see if we're close enough with just putting a little bend in because it's not much now, I don't know if this will show up but I did put bend in one direction and then a bend in the other so now it's nice nice and flat so what I'm going to do is tack one on well I'll round that end off just to make it nice I'll tack one on and then I can use a clamp across the top and hold the other one to get them both exactly the same so let me just go and round that corner off and put a couple of tacks in this so there's that one tacked on so now I'll do the couple of little bends I'll put this one on that side and I'll put a clamp on to hold it make sure it's all the same and then I'll tack the other side and then I'll do some bronzes on here then we'll move to the head steady so I've uh, done a fair bit of bronze on there it's all nice uh, and I've been thinking more and more and more about this and there's a couple of things that make things difficult for it. I can see why they just did it at the back end here. Uh, one thing is I can only just with a bit of finagling get this rear rocker box off with the, the engine in. You've got to pull the studs up and it does go on and off so at least you don't have to drop the engine or anything if you wanted to do something to the top end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it um, Virtually the same as Ian's bike with a, a bracket at the back here, but I'm going to mount it to both of them. I don't think Ian's did, I think it only mounted to one side. So I've made up a little cardboard template and I cut this and I got my maths right because I know this thing at the back is vertical and I know that's 113 degrees to the vertical, so to the horizontal it had to be 23 degrees. 90 off 113 is 23. So I cut it to 23, that's going to go on there like that. That will bolt on there and then it will bolt on there like that. Now I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to have to mill a bit out because there is, no I won't. The oil lines, hang on let me turn you off while I get the oil lines. Yes we're alright, the, uh, the rocker feed goes out of the side. And they're below the level of that so we can put that on there and we'll be fine all right so I've got to put a couple of 3 8 holes in there we'll do that and then 
I'm going to drill a couple of holes in here and where did that fall down to? Oh, there it is. What I'm going to do is drill this. We're going to mount that on there like that. So I'll drill it and then on the inside I'll put a couple of captive nuts and then that way we can just put a couple of short bolts in. Bingo, we'll be ready. So let me go and cut a few holes and then we'll come back and see if that's all right. And then the way we'll do it to make sure everything is good is we'll bolt this onto there, bolt this onto there and that will hold that where we want it. All right, and then we can bronze it on. So as I said, let me go and knock some holes in this. These are three eighths. I'll do a couple of five, six, five sixteenths down here. Before we go any further, this is especially for Ian Ballard. See, I do listen to people. Now I've cut it out in piece quarter inch alloy and done those holes there. I've left this long. So that's going to go on there like that. And I just thought something, I'm going to need a hole at the back because we have that. Whoop. The actual feed. Right. So we will mark this, I'll, I think just to drill a largish hole will be fine, right there. So what I'm going to do is, like I did with the engine plates, I'm going to put some die cam on and stick a transfer punch up through there and just mark it. So let me do that. Right then, I'll put a hole in there. I put the dome nut in. A couple of eagle-eyed people noticed that they were in upside down when I was stripping the engine. But as I said, I think somebody just put everything together so they didn't lose all the bits. So that now goes on there. Nice big gap around that. So the next thing is that. And there it goes. A couple of bolts in there. Okay. If I've got any 3 8 these are 3 8 BSC. Hold on. I did have a couple of uh, BSC nuts. I just thought something. How much space we've got there for the carb to go on. So I'll have to get the manifold and the carb and see we've got enough. And if I need any more space here, what we can do is we can put a bend in that and move that up there. All right, but it's 5.38. So time for me to go in, have something to eat. So I'll see you on Saturday morning. Right now it's Saturday morning. So we're finishing off. Okay, I noticed that when I put this on, because it's quarter inch plate and not the little steel plate that the Triumphs had, that there wasn't enough sticking up here to put a nut on. So I've done two things. I didn't want it just pressing on the hex. I wanted to have a washer there and I want to have a lock washer on the top. So what I've done is actually recessed that, basically the thickness of a washer. And also I took 80 thou. There's still plenty of sort of bolt head if you like for want of a better word so now I can put a couple of washers on I can put that on the washers recess into the plate so they don't uh, what was I going to say they don't take up any of the height the extra height I've gained And I'll put a couple of lock washers under there. And 
I've drilled a couple of 5 16th holes in the back so we're going to uh, mark this thing where we want it so they bolt on nicely now you can see there's a little bit sticking out so with a tooth type washer which is what I'm going to put on there that nicely clears that clears the pipe underneath everything like that and I should have found some bolts but I didn't the other thing you may remember I was wondering about was carburetor clearance so there's the manifold and there's the carb so we've got plenty of clearance and what I've also done actually is put a washer a washer a top on and a cable now that bends a little bit so what I'm thinking of doing is there going to be two bolts one there and one there so in the center I'm going to drill another hole and if need be I can put the cable through that all right so let's um mark this because I haven't got the pen with me I'll mark it where those two holes are because I can drill that and put a captive washer in each and then we can come back bolt this on bronze it and we are done all right so I've put some nuts on the back so it's drilled the cable can go through there so now we're going to uh, put that on there like that make sure they go down into their little recesses tighten that on there And there we go now I'll just bronze this on and that's all the engine mountings done right we are there's that bronzed on the two nuts in all bolted there and as you can see everything else fits on right so that is the engine in front back top as I say I've got to do something with this pipe to get it to match up to that but we can leave that for now so there's our entire front frame loop uh, one bracket to go on I suppose for the coil unless it gets fit, fitted back here somewhere uh, and we're all right now for the cable for the carburetor that's not a problem when I take all this apart I can finish bronzing these bits here because they were just a bit too awkward to get to all right so that's that for this week next week we uh there's my hat we put the swinging arm we make the box up fit it to the frame and then we've got to do our top part i've ordered my rock shocks they should be here in a week or so so there you go all right everybody you stay safe and enjoy yourselves